Stefan does. <laughs> See, I like acoustic, <laughs> but there's nothing worse than playing a song that you wrote to rock, yeah. playing it acoustic. You don't even know the song. Oh, what an idiot. That's what we told you the first time. You said, don't And you went right too there. long. You said, it was blow twice. That was the first time. Yeah, we've caved in a few times, and we don't mind doing it. But it's I'm actually kind of surprising how, how some of our songs yeah. that were meant to rock sound fine acoustic, so it's all good. I think we're an adaptable band, and, and that, you know we can. We've proven that we can do songs like that and strip them down, and yeah. there's still the quality of the song is the same. If good. anything, so we, cool. we take it as a you know we can do this. You know, if anyone, then we're not afraid to try it. So I mean, we're just not very well rehearsed acoustic, but hey, it's all good.
I think we actually wanted to go where it was a lot more steamier. Right, right. But they wouldn't let us. Because it's so unstable, climbing down inside of it's a real bad idea. If you lose your footing, you know, you're going to basically have a slow cook. And it's coming out of the ground about 150 degrees, right? When it, you know, if you stuck your hand down in there, you could scald yourself. Obviously, it's steam. <laughs> it's hot. They said if it's brown, you might go down. So that was the brown area over there. So, yeah. I mean, it was it was off the hook, though. I mean, green, you're clean. Brown, you might go down. Yeah. It's a great example of uh, where it's brown, you go down. Basically, with draws, uh, the steam keeps coming up out of these cracks. It erodes the rock around it, and it basically causes little mini craters. We've got about almost 2,000 tons of sulfur dioxide a day pouring out of this volcano. Uh, and so you might get some respiratory distress and respiratory problems. So you, uh, you may brew up the root of the Hualoa, use it as a tea. To I see how the land survived over all the years, you know, Hawaii's been here. Yeah, and to see new land form, I mean, you know, this, this will probably be a continent one day. And this is, you know, it's a small island, the biggest of all of the islands, but one day it may be, it's growing as we so just speak. It was amazing. The blessing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, you know, the guy that's making nice circles. Oh, circles. Can we gather in a circle, please? Make yeah. a nice circle? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can we make a nice circle, please? <laughs> circles, yeah. Good morning to everybody. My name is Auli'i, and I am Kuhula Halau Okahiva Hiva in Hilo. Whatever that, that dude was, some priest or something, man, it was like, it was weird. I don't know, he'd start telling the story. Well, first he started talking to us in some other language. I guess it was the Hawaiian language he was talking to us in, and I didn't understand it again. I can't remember his name. He po mai ka ike ia, no ka o kohana ike ia la, iluna o kinawea. I swear, we'll fuck up anything beautiful. <laughs> it's really, you picked the wrong band, you know what I mean? Nunulu i kalani, ka holo i kalani. Yeah, I, was, I didn't know what was going on. I, first, I didn't know what he was going to do with it at first, and I saw him squirting on people, and I was like, you know, I wasn't mad, I was just like, what, whatever. Yeah, it was cool, man, it was cool. Our band's only moved by spirits of the liquid form. <laughs> The Wapio Valley trip was, was pretty dope. It was uh, descending down that mountain. That was insane for me because I was I was afraid. The ground was wet for one. They had the big sign in the car. I don't know if you read it, but do not ride brakes. They will fail. And I just pictured us going over that cliff. And then the guy was like, "Tell me, oh yeah, there's cars down there that, that had made it." And that right was crazy. Where we came down. Yeah. Wow. It, was, it was pretty scary. Once we got down, it was really cool though. Going through all that water it was dope. Oh my god. That, actually, that was really cool. That was cool. It was pretty amazing, but it's pretty deceiving from when you're up on top and then you actually get down there and it's just the wind and everything. It's really, really cool. No, man! I could see, you could see the waterfall and that might be nice, but I mean, it was cool. I, I couldn't look like that. We were impressed with the fact that the, uh, the latrine had no door. That way, you're, you're ready. It's like in the Old West, you know what I'm saying? And then we're actually getting to the beach and um, like seeing a pretty like you know desolate place on, on on the island. You know what I mean? That's that's like a, you know, not too many people go down there. And it was it was cool, man.
It was really cool. It burnt my eyes. Yeah. Come on. Quit. <laughs> what? Like, yeah. Todd, I'm eating yeah, well right now. Like, yeah. Never seen anything like that, you know? Earth forming as we, you know, as we, Up as close. we kick it with it, you know? Yeah. I wanted, to, I wanted to hold it in my hand. I wouldn't have a hand, though. So basically what we're dealing with here is brand new land. This rock is extremely sharp. It's about 50% silicon, which is glass. So if you fall on it, you're gonna get a gash. Uh, it'll probably be, you know, it can be really deep and really fast. Uh, there's staff in the rock, so there's also, uh, you know, a possibility of infection. So you just wanna stay alert out here overall. There's places where you might stand and the ground could drop out from underneath you. It's a possibility, although it's very unlikely. Uh, hopefully, we're gonna come up to liquid rock and we're gonna see this red moving stone and advances very slowly but it's over 2,000 degrees when it's flowing out there oh, it's hot. and you can just step right into red hot rock that is beautiful I can see it from here Feel it? I mean, it looked like what you picture Mars looking like, like as far as like the whole place itself. I mean, it was really, really futuristic, which was really cool. And then we went to go look, actually looked for lava to find actual lava, and I actually didn't think we were gonna find any. And I was really surprised when we first saw, we first saw this little, this little bit pop out. It was insane, man. I mean, you couldn't basically you couldn't stand like three feet from it because you, your face would just start just melt off. It was so damn hot. I'm about to move before I get burned up. It was cool, man. It was just cool to check out. Um, and then uh, we actually actually ended up finding a bunch of lava. Hey, when we first got here, you saw it. It was one little bubble coming out of a little crack. 
Now yeah. I saw that. By that time, it was getting kind of late, so we, you know, we headed back. It was a good day, though. Here I'm born, feeding on his luck. Birth is his curse, because he wanted to meet Christ. I felt danger, especially I mean, when Juan went to save your hat. <laughs> I thought he was gonna lose a limb for sure, dude. <laughs> but when I started he ran We were in the hot spot. He ran straight into like. <laughs> Takes one for the team.
After a while, you get kind of confused where you're at, and it all looks totally. You're just surrounded. You don't even know if you're really surrounded. It's surrounded by hot molten magma. When I started, when I started smelling rubber, burnt rubber, the soles of people's shoes, I knew that you know we were in the hot zone. Look at that! Look at the ooze right there, man. That's so tight. Woo! Feel the heat at that breaks out. Look, it's hot. We had a misconception. He was like, well, you know, be careful where you step. You don't want to step into the lava or something. And it's like, after being there, you know that the lava's going to let you know where it's at because by the time you get there, it's so hot. You know? Ah, God, that's hot. Oh, man, is that hot. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Yep, that's beautiful. I think being a DJ has, has opened up to other stuff, not only just DJing stuff, but even just drum machines, electronics, and it's just, shakers. It's, yes, it's opened up to shakers and everything. Yes, gourds. It just helps the gourds and the, av and the avos grow. Yeah, man, it's getting bigger. In fact, the avo. I don't think it's ripening as we wait for each tape. In between takes, my avo gets riper. I just try and be creative with four guys who are all trying to be creative at the same time. What? You play it right. Don't ask me what. Oh. That's a task. Of in itself right there, just us being creative and being able to deal with each other. And we deal with each other pretty pretty good pretty pretty well. Oh, 
high school shit you've ever seen in your life? Yo, 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 We're all like brothers and uh, some sisters. Yeah, some sisters, definitely. <laughs> ain't saying no names, we ain't pointing no fingers. Welcome to the Pu'uhonua Ohonao Nao National Historical Park. Thank you. It's a tough one, yeah? <laughs> this is an area the early Hawaiians used as a place of forgiveness. A long time ago, you break a couple, you break a lot, they didn't mess with you. They didn't give you a ticket, they didn't put you in jail. Punishment was death, period. Too simple. It didn't matter who you were, man, woman, child. It didn't matter what law you broke. You break the law, you pay the price, you die. Because when you broke the law, you did not offend man, you had offended the gods. Now, whoever saw you break the law, for example, say your father saw you, your wife, your son, your best friend, it was that person's responsibility to carry out the punishment. See the little crabs? Where? I feel like I saw these little black crabs over there. 
So anyway, if you manage to escape death and make it to a place like this, a pool honua, you were forgiven of your wrongdoing and given a second chance to life. That's cool. I think I'm gonna start a place like this where you just can yeah, be free could, and you know, come and go rob something and then get to that place and pick somebody off and then be able to get to the that <laughs> desired location to cleanse yourself out. Wow. The trick was to get here. It wasn't easy, it wasn't a walk in a park. You had to swim to get to this area. But whoever's chasing you, chasing you. Hey, what's up, turtle? Mr. Turtle. Once you got in there, you were safe. No harm could come to you. You met a priest, and he forgave whatever wrongdoing you had done. You stayed out here at the most two days, and then you swam back out of the first. Wow. Simple, huh? You should make it a little harder, like this island. I think that's important. Swim into it. Make it a it. lot harder. It's like the opposite of Alcatraz. You could swim to this island, and mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, I was really tripped out on it. I never, I had never been to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Just being on the rainy side of the island and stuff, it wasn't really what I thought. It's actually kind of beautiful. I thought it was cool, man. I feel over overworked just because of my own schedule at home right now, where I'm so bugged out on, on like so many projects I'm working on musically. And then coming here, it's supposed to be a time to like 
to me, it felt like Hawaii. We're gonna go. It's time to go, like relax there. But I love. I, I mean, I feel very happy that that we could play music, and our music enables us to go all over the world. And it's pretty cool. So.
To experience more of this adventure, log on to musicinhighplaces.msn.com.